This is the sign that God's preparing you for breakthrough. Are you ready for it? Come on, come in here close. The sign that God is preparing you for a breakthrough is this. Satan is fighting you with everything he has to keep you down. I can't take it anymore. You hang in. Temptation, opposition, oppression, depression, you name it, Satan is throwing it at you because he knows you're a threat and on the brink of a breakthrough. So join me today and I'll show you how to outsmart and overcome the opposition of the enemy on Church Door. Well, it's happening again for the 58th time in history, the most important battle on American soil. Drum roll, please. That's your drum roll. Yeah, you got it. The Super Bowl. Every single year, the greatest American football athletes battle it out until only one team is left standing with that coveted Vince Lombardi trophy. One thing is for sure, whoever stands on that podium this year deserves it. I mean, they just don't hand the trophy out to anybody who wants it. I want that. Ultimately, the team has to earn it. They spend week after week enduring hit after hit, injury, setbacks, internal conflicts, pushing through the pain in order to reap the biggest reward in American football. Yet somehow we expect our faith walk to be different, like the devil's just gonna open up the door and walk out of our lives without opposition or contest or pain. Matter of fact, if Satan is not fighting you, you're probably no threat to his cause. I guess we're just gonna have to wait till Saturday. This begs the question, are you truly in the game? Are you living a life that is pleasing and honoring to God or are you aiding and abetting the enemy? That's why I'm calling today's message, how to outsmart and overcome the opposition of the enemy. Listen, we have a problem in our culture and that problem is the problem of pain. No! I mean, how many people do you know that they're doing everything to escape pain? And maybe this is you. Self-medicating, burying yourself in work to distract you, avoiding conversations, really the list can go on and on and on, but here's the real truth. Our culture just does not like pain. Yet for the Christian, we are not called out of the pain, but through the pain. God does not just sweep us up the second we give our lives to him and call us home. No, he calls us to live in this world, but not be part of it. And ultimately, it's not until we press into this pain that we see that we're just woefully inadequate and truly powerless. And we see just how much we need God to pull us through our battles. In Joshua chapter 10, we now catch up with God's people who are well into a seven year conquest to claim the land that was promised to them. Yep, and you heard me right. Seven years of non-stop war, and that's just enough for anyone to give up. You know, I'm kind of tired of this war and death thing, guys. I think I'm gonna go take a breather. Yet Israel had not given up because they knew the God of heaven was pulling them through their battles. And if you remember from last week, it all started with the fall of Jericho. Now by chapter 10, they had taken the city of Ai and had also had the people of Gibeon surrender to their authority. In the light of this peace that was made with the Gibeonites, five kings from the hill countries who were also known as a group called the Amorites decided to join forces and attack the city of Gibeon. What ensues after is one of the most intriguing conflicts of this conquest. So Joshua and his armies go marching all night long to come to the aid of the Gibeonites. And once Israel arrives, the Amorites get so freaked out they turn and start to run away. <laughs> and as they're running away, God opens up the heavens and begins to drop hailstones large enough to kill those running enemies. And if this story hadn't got crazy enough, then this is what happened. On the day the Lord gave the Amorites over to Israel, Joshua said to the Lord in the presence of Israel, Son, stand still over Gibeon, 
and you, moon, over the valley of Ijalon. So the sun stood still and the moon stopped till the nations avenged itself on its enemies. And as it was written in the book of Jezar, the sun stopped in the middle of the sky and delayed going down about a full day. There has never been a day like it before or since, a day when the Lord listened to a human being. Surely the Lord was fighting for Israel. As Joshua is entrenched in this battle, he calls out to the Lord, asking him to stop the sun so that they could bring this battle to an end. So here's my big thought. If you're going to outsmart and overcome the opposition of the enemy, you need to know when to call an audible. In football, when the quarterback sees the play is not going the way he thought it would, he will call out to the team and change the play on the fly. 96 double! Check, oh, what a flare, what a flare! Omaha! As we look at these battles in Joshua and how they connect to our lives, it really is a reflection of how we battle against our enemy, Satan. He will try to hit us from every direction, just like the Amorites did to Israel and the Gibeonites. He will hit us through our marriages. He will hit us through our friendships, our family, our churches, and our work. He does not like to see you win. <laughs> Therefore, in the heat of battle, we must learn to be light on our feet and call an audible just like Joshua did, asking God to stop the sun. Now you might ask, what does this look like for me? And I would say, firstly, in the heat of battle with Satan, you must learn to call the audible of God's supernatural power into the mix. Listen, the God we serve is the exact same God who split the Red Sea, the one who made dry land across the Jordan for Israel to cross over, the same God who rose Jesus from the grave, and the same God who made the sun stand still for Joshua. He has not changed. Matter of fact, the Bible tells us this. God is faithful and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability, but with the temptation, he will also provide the way of escape that you may be able to endure it. When it seems like there is no way out of whatever battle you're facing, God says he will make a way out where there is no way. If you're in the heat of a battle right now, our team is here and would love to pray with you to show you how you can call an audible asking God's power to come into the middle of your situation and change it forever. You can hit us down in the comment section or text prayer to the number that you see coming up on the screen right now. Do us a favor, help us promote great Christian content by hitting that subscribe button and the notification bell so that every single time we put out a piece of content, it's gonna come directly to you. Or you can go the extra mile. Go to rivervalleyrockford.org slash give and make a donation there. Every single cent that comes in goes right back out to helping people just like you take their next step with Jesus. We're so glad that you've come to be with us here today and our prayer for you this week is that you would know the God of all this universe who has all power in his hand will walk with you. You can call on him and he will be there. Wherever you're tempted, he will provide a way out. Hey, if you missed last week's video, go ahead and click the image you see coming up on the screen right now. It'll take you to last week's message where you can continue with us in this series called Vision to Victory. Thank you.